Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing my elegant, natural makeup routine and how I do my 40s inspired hair. I've been asked quite a lot recently to film this video, so thank you so much for your feedback and I really hope you enjoy this edition. And of course, if you do enjoy it, I would always be grateful for any thumbs up you've got going spare. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, that would be really lovely too. So today's look is very much my everyday routine in summer. I hate to feel caked in makeup, especially in the heat, and I much prefer that lovely dewy glow. My hair on the other hand is actually quite styled but I actually like the juxtaposition of those two styles sat together. So let me get stuck in and share with you how I created this look. This is where I'm starting from. I have cleansed and toned my skin and instead of just using the moisturiser on its own, which I would normally do, um, I use the Dior Capture Total Cell Energy Moisturiser. I have recently been adding a couple of drops of this. Now this is by a brand called Revi. It's called the Self Tan Booster and essentially it's giving you a very, very mild and natural tan. Now provided my skin is having a good moment, I'm not having any breakouts, the main thing I skip out of my makeup routine throughout summer would be foundation. So I start with concealer and after reading a review about this one which is called the Stretch Concealer from Glossier, I decided to give it a try. Shade wise I've gone for G9 but they've got a good selection of shades on there so you should be able to find one to suit your skin tone. As you can probably see I've got dark rings under my eyes and a little bit of pigmentation just down this section. So that's the main area that I want to conceal. But I'm not going to go too crazy with it because ultimately I want my makeup to feel very natural, barely there. So just patting that mainly on that dark section just coming down from the corner of my eye. So I tend to flip from eye to eye and just build it up slowly, which is what they suggest to do. It's got a really lovely silky texture to it and when you put it on it feels like that on your skin as well. And in my experience with a tiny touch up it lasts all day. Another little trick I saw um, was if you take a little bit of your concealer in a straight line from the corner of your eye over just below your temple, kind of just brightens your eyes a bit. Then I tend to get a little bit of redness around at the bottom of my nose. So I'm gonna add a little bit in there. Excuse my unmanicured nails, by the way. This is actually a major improvement uh, with my eczema, but I'm trying to leave my nails bare and just let them grow a little bit and heal from all the shellac I've put on them before. Actually, I'm just gonna mention this cream while I'm thinking about it, Aveeno, the blue one. <laughs> I think this is for very dry skin. Over the years, I tried everything on my eczema and there isn't a steroid cream or a super expensive designer cream that is as good as the Aveeno that you can pick up in Asda for about four quid. If you've tried everything so far and nothing's worked and you don't mind spending a couple of quid on trying something else, this has made a massive difference to mine, so just saying. Now just for that one spot that's rearing his ugly head, I'm gonna use a little bit of Bare Minerals uh, concealer. This is the original. I've got that in light 2N. That has kind of taken the redness out a little bit. So another trick for when you're wanting to look really natural, barely there makeup, is don't go overboard on the powder. So from Bare Minerals, again, I'm using the Mineral Veil Translucent Powder. This is brilliant. And to apply this powder under my eyes, I'm actually going to use a eyeshadow brush, but the slightly thicker end. And although this is a bit of a slow process, it does make a difference in terms of it lasting better all day. So I just very gently pad in under the eye to fix it in place because I want to be able to keep this really dewy and natural and glowing. That's why I'm using this small brush so I can be really direct where I want the powder to go. Okay, so the next thing is bronzer. I tend to do bronzer next and then eyebrows, um, otherwise I'd just shimmy them all out of place. So I bought myself some new bronzing powder from MAC. This is called the Matte Bronze. And I was completely devoted to NARS when it came to bronzers. I love the shade Laguna. I think it's a really, really pretty shade. But recently I've been craving very understated natural makeup. Um, I don't want any glitter at all. So I don't think NARS Laguna would work quite so well. I think you need something a bit more matte, uh, which MAC do really well. So I'm quite generous with this as we want to look bronze and glowy. So underneath, the cheekbone up to the temple and just round in circles so just kind of where the sun would hit you if you'd got a bit of a suntan. Started to get more pigmentation on my chin recently 
anyone knows any good ways and easy and not you know surgery to get rid of pigmentation please do let me know i bought some products from the ordinary what did i buy the alpha something and a caffeine one and obviously i've got retinol I'm not really sure. One, if I should use them like in an order on the same day. And two, I don't even know which one. I thought the alpha thing, I'll put the proper name here. I thought that was supposed to be good for pigmentation, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. Now, normally when it comes to blusher, I would still be using this palette that I got from Deck of Scarlet, which has still got lots left. This is like lasting forever. So this is the shade I like. It's called Love Sick, and it does give you that lovely rosy glow on your cheeks. However, a bit like the NARS Laguna Bronzer, it has got quite a bit of glitter in it, and I want to avoid that with this look. When I was on Glossier's website, I bought a couple of eyebrow products, I bought the concealer, and I saw that they'd got Cloud Paint Blusher. A cream blusher basically now the color i was going to go for in the cloud paint is called puff and it was a very very light pink but matte light pink so it's not got any glitter to it but i'd already spent about 50 pounds on the products i did buy so i thought Do you know what i'll just wait see what the products are like and then i can always go back and buy it in the meantime i remembered i've got this lovely slightly bashed lipstick in a brilliant shade of pink so I figured, you know what, I'll just try that on my cheeks, see if I like the colour and then I can go back and buy the glossier one if it works. And it does work very, very well. So much so, I was kind of thinking, do I need to buy the cloud paint? Probably not. All I do, a bit like with your blusher, is smile and get it right in your apples of your cheeks. And the other nice thing about using cream blush rather than a powder is, of course, you're getting that glow as well. Again, I'm just going to put a tiny bit bridge my nose they're looking nice and rosy so now i'm going to prep my lips ready for lipstick in a little bit and i'm using the malin and goetz mojito lip balm this was a present from my lovely friend actually uh, when i came out of hospital she turned up with a bag of goodies and this little beauty was one of them she swears by it so she said you've got to try it so this just makes my lips nice and moisturized uh ready for lipstick in a little bit With this look on my eyes, sometimes I actually leave them completely bare and put no eyeshadow at all, no mascara. Today I'm going to put a very, very tiny bit of cream eyeshadow. And I'm using the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Cream Shadow Stick in Golden Pink. This came in a glossy box that I got recently. I think it was a, a Grazia collaboration. Anyway, that is the colour. Just going to do like a little bit across the lid. So just pad that into place all i want is a tiny tiny bit of sheen on my eyelids which is done okay so onto eyebrows and i'm very excited to be able to say to you all that i think i finally worked out the perfect formula to getting those lovely big bushy eyebrows one without having them microbladed and two not having to look totally ridiculous like i did with eyebrow lamination and the answer is from Glossier. I bought myself the Boy Brow and the Brow Flick, and I will talk you through both of these products. But particularly, the Boy Brow has become my absolute go-to. So first of all, let's do the negative. The Brow Flick, I don't think it's worth the money. It doesn't do what it looks like it does on their video or the, the pictures on their, on their website. Not for me, anyway. But I would very, very highly recommend the Boy Brow. This one is amazing. The most important thing, I think, is a bit like when you're applying your concealer is go really slowly and layer up. So in this scarily close shot, you can see that this eye route is quite sparse at the front and this one is just generally a bit wonky. So that's what we're gonna try and fill out. So at the very sparse section, I'm just gonna fill from there up and out, not putting too much over here because I obviously want to keep it really natural, just feathering the color through. Not only has it got some color in it, which obviously helps, but the formula itself seems to make your eyebrows feel thicker and bushier on top of that. Now just to help fill in those very sparse sections at the front of my eyebrows, I'm gonna use a very tiny bit of the Code 8 eyebrow pencil. I've got that one in dark, literally just like a couple of strands of hair. I don't want any more than that. And then I'm gonna do one more fluffing up with the boy brow. It was a long time coming, but I'm very happy to have finally perfected eyebrow gate. But thanks to Glossier Boy Brow, not sponsored, I now have those big bushy eyebrows that I wanted. Now the normal sequence of events would now be to put on some mascara, 
But the other difference with this very natural, elegant summer makeup that I do is that I cut that out as well as the foundation. And reason being, I really want that look of you're just a little bit sun-kissed on the beach. And I don't know about you, but I definitely wouldn't be wearing mascara on the beach. So I've been cutting it out, just adding a touch of lipstick, and I really like how that looks as a whole. So let me show you. So back to my slightly mushed looking MAC lipstick. I would try to clean that on the bottom so I could actually tell you the shade. It's called Lustre Something Day. This is so old, I don't even know if they still stock it. So tell me if you can decipher what color that is and maybe put it in the comment section below and let everybody else know. So just dabbing it again, I don't want it perfect. I don't want to use a lip brush, just a stain on my lips, a little bit like my cheeks. So that's my elegant, very natural summer makeup complete. Hopefully you like it too. I personally feel really comfortable with this kind of makeup and it's what I've been doing virtually every day throughout summer. It feels enough, I feel done and I feel polished, but I don't feel caked in makeup, which is how I feel most comfortable. So let me get onto hair and show you how I've been styling those big barrel 40s inspired curls. I originally spotted in a movie on a lovely actress and I thought, oh, that looks pretty. I'll have a go, see if I can make that work. I went and bought myself a big barrel curler because I didn't have one. This is the Remington Pro Lux. Seems to do the job. The wider, the better with this because obviously you want those big barrel curls with the other curler I have, which I haven't got on me. It's, it's quite skinny, so you're gonna get quite ringlety ones. The bigger it goes, the nicer and softer the curls will go. With this style, the trick is to have them all going in the same direction, ideally rolling to the front. That makes it feel a lot more 40s. Now that first curl, I don't mind coming quite high, you can see here, but I've still got a good couple of inches away from scalp. And if I talk too much, I will go too ringlety. So that's the kind of curl you want, bringing it forward. My fringe is a little bit of a palaver to curl. So what I've been doing is taking this section upwards, I take it over and back under itself. I just want a flick on that fringe. In fact, I'll be quite glad when it grows out and it will do this style properly and then I'll probably cut it back in again. So by doing the fringe that direction, you get a curl that will slightly flick out there, which is better for me. So I'm just gonna leave that one to cool down on one side. Taking a section more from the top but slightly thicker than the first one here. You don't want these curls too thin um, because they'll just get too springy. If I leave a little bit of the length coming through there, I can grip it a bit tighter and then just pull it back. Now, after this first couple, you don't want to take it all the way up, so just slightly lower from this point on. When I've got roughly to the center at the back, I then do the other side. Not for any technical reason, but just have it. That's how I do it. Okay, so we're roughly halfway, so we're gonna go onto this side, I'm gonna get that one out of the way. I should have mentioned actually before this, um, I'd obviously got clean hair, I'd washed it this morning and uh, blow dried it as best as I could with that side parting. And the side parting, I'll show you in a minute when I put the fringe down, but I generally go in between, halfway between that eyebrow, that's where I tend to do the parting. So same again, rolling the curls forward towards your face and working all the way around your hair. So that's what it looks like when you finish curling it. All I've been doing now is let it cool down a little bit and then brush it through. And like I mentioned, the calmer and looser those curls get, the better it looks in my opinion. Now, I don't really like using too much hairspray, but I'm gonna apply a little bit just on these flyaway bits at the top. Normal hold from uh, L'Oreal. So if I just cover that. I just want those roots to sit flat really. And that's it, my very elegant and natural makeup and 40s inspired hair is complete. I hope you like this style and you've enjoyed this video and maybe it's given you a few tips along the way do let me know in the comments section below. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I would be very grateful for any spare thumbs up you've got going. If you're not already subscribed, that would be lovely too. I mostly post fashion videos every single Sunday. And also in the description box below is a link to my Instagram page where I post daily outfit ideas and inspiration. Thank you again for watching and hopefully you'll join me back here same time next week with a lovely fashion edition. Take care.